Good morning and welcome everybody. My name is Davide Liprandi and I work in System and Research Applications Department of ST Microelectronics. Today I will show you a proof of concept that will demonstrate some of ST hardware and software solutions for Internet of Things applications. Enjoy! So, this is a typical sensors to gateway to cloud scenario where we might have several sensor boards, those on the left, a gateway and uh, a dashboard to analyze data on the cloud. This is a proof of concept actually that uh, mixes up different use cases. For example, on the top left, we have a sensor tile dot box, which is a board well suited for wearable applications. This is uh, running artificial intelligence algorithms like uh, audio scene classification, plus activity recognition, and uh, it can support firmware over the air update, in particular the update from the dashboard of uh, the neural network's weights, provided that there is already on the cloud another version of uh, the network with better weights. Since the firmware update is done via Bluetooth, it would require some minutes to update a wall AI firmware that's quite big, so that's why we have put a second sensor tile dot box running a much smaller binary, which uh, just blinks the LED on that box to demonstrate the full firmware over the air update. Third, we have an ST Win sensors board designed for industrial applications, which could be stick to an industrial equipment like a motor or a pump and sense its vibrations. Then the microcontroller on board can compute the fast Fourier transform of the data and send only this compressed representation, not the full data, to the gateway via Wi-Fi in order to save time, space on the cloud and hence money. The gateway may or may not further elaborate data depending on the use case. Then it sends the processed data and the events on the cloud so that uh, an operator can analyze them thanks to a dashboard. Now let's have a look at the software stack that runs on the STM32 MP1 gateway and in particular on the Dual Cortex A7 core where it runs an OpenST Linux distribution. On top of it there is uh, the Docker daemon which uh, allows to instantiate and run a number of custom Docker containers already compiled and uploaded to the cloud that have to be deployed to the gateway before using. At the startup, the daemon puts in execution the IoT Edge runtime from Microsoft, which uh, is made up of the Edge Agent and the Edge Hub that are responsible for handling the communication among the modules. Then, at the very top level, we find the custom modules which have been written for this proof of concept. On the left, there is the Bluetooth container which uh, makes use of the BlueST SDK to connect uh, the Bluetooth devices and uh, the Edge SDK to connect to the Microsoft Azure Cloud. Then, the main application implements the logic to handle the artificial intelligence events and the firmware over the air update. On the right, there is the Edge container, which runs a function to filter out the fast Fourier transform data, so that uh, as soon as some samples overcome specific thresholds on the amplitude of the vibration, a corresponding alarm is triggered locally and sent to the cloud as well. In the middle, there is the graphics container, which is uh, responsible for uh, showing some user interface in case and pop-ups as soon as the alarms get uh, generated by the FFT container in order to provide a local feedback to an operator. All these three custom containers have been written in Python and due to the current hardware resources of the DK2 board cannot run all at the same time. Future more powerful releases of the gateway will allow to run them all together. Here we are with the setup. In the middle we have our STM32MP1 discovery board, which is acting as a gateway in this scenario. Um, it is provided with a dual cortex A7 
running at 650 MHz from ARM and uh, an M4 microcontroller. It is connected to a router through an Ethernet connection and to a PC for debugging purposes via micro USB port. And there is also a speaker connected through audio jack. It is provided also with an Arduino connector and a Raspberry compatible connector for further expansion boards. Then we have here our STWIN kit, which has been designed specifically for industrial applications. It is provided with a number of sensors like uh, environmental and inertia sensors and also with a wide range of vibrometer which is uh, reaching up to 6 kHz and in the, this scenario it will simulate vibration data from an industrial equipment like uh, a motor for example. It will compute the fast Fourier transform of the data directly on the microcontroller and will send data via Wi-Fi to the gateway, which is configured as an hotspot. And here we have two samples of a sensor tag dot box. This is a development kit which has been designed for uh, wearable sensors applications. It is provided with a number of um, inertial and environmental sensors and also uh, with a Bluetooth 4.1 connection. In this case, the first one will run artificial intelligence algorithms capable of detecting the surrounding scene and the activities. And the second one will show firmware update over the air capabilities. Then last but not least, we also have developed a dashboard, which is based on the Microsoft Azure cloud platform. Well, let's have a look at the artificial intelligence and firmware over the air update scenario. So this is the dashboard. Let's log in. The first thing that uh, you will see is the list of the devices configured. So we have a gateway on the left and the DSTWIN on the right. While on the left of the page, we can see a menu where we can select, for example, AI sensing. So let's... Uh, look at the uh, sensor tile dot uh, boxes running artificial intelligence algorithms as you can see here uh, the neural network running on it can uh, estimate some activities like for example um, biking or jogging or uh, walking or stationary position and also uh, estimate uh, the surrounding scene like for example indoor outdoor or in vehicle now, what if we had retrained the network on other training sets and they'd come out with better weights? Well, from this dashboard it is possible to load a file containing the new weights, compile it on the cloud and generate a so-called partial firmware. From a device panel we can see its AI capabilities, if any, in this case audio scene classification and activity recognition. Now let's try to update a neural network weights, so let's first select a binary, previously generated in this case, and start downloading it via Bluetooth to the device. As soon as the firmware download has completed, the board reboots so that the application running in the Docker container receives a disconnection, and then has to discover and to connect to it again. Now we can try whether the first sensor tile dot box works again and uh, hopefully better than before in uh, recognizing activities and scenes as we should have updated it with better weights. Obviously, uh, retraining a network is not an easy task. It requires wide training sets and someone which tags them based on experience. Let's move to the second sensor tag dot box now and perform a full firmware over the air update. That is the update of the whole firmware running on it. The bigger the firmware, the longer the time required. As you see, the board is running a firmware that keeps the red LED on. So let's update it with the firmware that turns the green LED on. The process takes longer than before, the video is being cut. And uh, at the end, we can see the green LED on rather than uh, the red one as expected. As before, the application performs again the discovery of the boards and connect to them automatically. Let me describe here a condition monitoring scenario where an STWIN acquires data from an industrial equipment and sends them to the STM32MP1. 
The gateway performs edge processing, that is the execution of a custom logic written the same way as it were running on the cloud. So let's turn on the SD-WAN and specify the Wi-Fi network to connect to, in this case the MP1 hotspot. The SD-WAN is capable of acquiring vibration data, computing the FFT, so the fast Fourier transform, on the microcontroller and sending it to the gateway. The gateway filters out the FFT data that overcomes some thresholds set previously and generates events shown on the screen and also sent to the dashboard. As you may see on the console of the SD-WIN on the right, it also sends environmental data like temperature, humidity and pressure and inertial data from accelerometer, gyroscope and magnetometer. Since I don't have here a motor to try with, the ST-Win is simulating some fast Fourier transform data that purposefully triggers a good condition like this, an alarm condition, and a more critical event as shown next. All these data are sent every 15 seconds, but this can be set from the dashboard. Let me for example set FFT data every 7 seconds and also stop environmental and inertial data from uh, this panel where I can perform a number of different actions on the device. Now, if we go back to the console, we can see an alarm triggered. That means that some FFT data, the amplitude of the x-axis at the fundamental frequency in this case, had a value that overcame the alarm threshold. After a while, another higher value triggers a more critical alarm that could, for example, require the substitution of a piece of hardware. In a real case, after the system had been repaired, the first startup should generate a good condition event. Now, let's, for example, pause the system and log out. Well, this ends this brief yet not exhaustive close-up on uh, typical sensors to get to cloud scenario. So thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for next exciting solutions from ST Microelectronics.